God is so good today. Praise God. I have a caught little something in my throat, but y'all bear with me. I just thank God for everything he's doing. It's just, you know what? It's, it's so wonderful to just know that you're, you're loved. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't God good? Y'all welcome to my channel. You know, it's all about God on this channel. It's, it's mostly about him. Okay? Let me put it like that. Because God has been so good to me. I can't help but praise him. I can't help but thank him and give him glory for everything that he is doing. He's an awesome God. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be uplifted. Amen. So we're going to open up in just a moment of prayer and recognizing who we and who God is. Amen. Let's give him some prayer, some praise. Thank you. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for just another day. Another day to praise you. Another day to uplift you. Thank you for waking us up in our right minds, God. Thank you, Lord, just, just Jesus, just for coming to us, Lord, filling us with your Holy Spirit, God. Thank you, Lord, for those that are not saved, that they can come to you and say, Father, what must I be to be, do to be saved? And that you will in no wise cast them out, God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you're married to that backslider, God, that they come back to you, Father, to their first love, God. For those that are, that are hungry for you, that they seek you, God. And thirsty, God, after righteousness, that they will be filled. God, we ask you to go into the hospitals today and let healing begin in there. We ask you to go into the prisons, God, and set those free. That, Lord, that didn't commit the crime, God, but they're in there suffering, God. We ask you, Lord, to set them free in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, we pray for those that are our loved ones that are in prison, that are coming out as a new beginning, God. And that you be with them, God. And that you open up transition homes, God, and, and people that's going to love and support them. They come out, God, a new life. And, Lord, that their sins are, are forgiven and threw into the sea of forgiveness where you don't remember it no more, God. We ask you, Lord, to just touch your people today, God. Everybody that hears that it's on this channel, God, from the sound of my voice, Lord, that they come to you. And that they know, Lord Jesus, that you alone are God. And that you're able to exceed me abundantly above all that they may ask to think in their lives, God. And we thank you for this is a day that you have made, God. And we will rejoice and be glad in it, God. And we thank you for another day. Another day to praise you. Another day to uplift you, God. And another day to give you glory. Thank you for this day. And as the words come uh, forth, God, out of this broken vessel of clay, Lord. Have your way in me, God. Let me decrease while you increase, Lord, in this broken vessel today, God. Just have your way, Holy Ghost. That somebody, that your word, somebody can be saved. That somebody can hear your word, God. Because you said when your word go out, it will not come out, come go out void, but accomplish what you wanted to accomplish. And we thank you for your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for joining in. I love the Lord today, and I'm here to just uplift Him. God is just so wonderful. And again, you know, it's just about praising Him. That's what I want to get on, to just give Him glory. He's my first love. He's your first love. If you believe in Him, if you accept Him as your Savior, and once you accept God in your heart, just know that transition don't start overnight. It's a process for some people. Everybody don't just get quick everything overnight, quick and in a hurry. We always want this instant thing, like God, a microwave thing. But it ain't like that with the Lord. God will meet you where you're at. Some of us, we come to the Christ and, and everything just, we don't want nothing else no more but Him. And sometimes, some of us, it's a process. It's a process. God will meet you where you are at. All you got to do is just come to Him and say, Lord... Here I am. Here I am. Just as I am, Lord. I come to you just as I am, asking you to have your way in my life. Amen? God is so great. It is greatly to be praised. I was sitting outside earlier, and I was just looking at the sky and looking at all the birds and trees, all the flowers and all the wonderful things God has made. And I said, God, you're an awesome God. You're so wonderful. And he said, look at them birds. They don't worry about nothing. God takes care of them. But we sit and we worry. And we carry this stuff all on us. This, this heavy burden. And God said, just lay it down. Lay it down at the foot of the cross. 
and lay down every weight and every sin that easily beset us. We got to lay it down. And give it to God. I'm so glad that now we can come boldly before the throne of grace and obtain mercy before God. We can come. We don't have to go to the priest for intercession. We don't have to bring no lamb because he was a sacrificial lamb. He died for our sins. He died so that we can live again. Amen. All we got to do is come to him and say, God, I accept you as my savior. I am a sinner saved by grace and I need a redeemer. I need a savior. I know that I can't do it myself. I know, God, that I am a sinner and I need you. And I need you in my life. And I can't make it without you. And then once you come in, and once you come in as you are, and give your life to Christ, he'll take over your life. All you got to do is give it to him and say, God, you know what? I love you. I trust you. I, I believe you. And I believe what your word says, God. I believe your word. And if your word says who I am in you, then I believe that. And that's all she wrote. And God, I just want you to just take complete control of my life. Just come in and have your way in my life. Because why? I surrender all to you. Every problem, everything that we do daily, we got to surrender to the foot of the cross. I got to die daily while he increases in my life. Every day. God, I, I, I surrender all. I give to you. Because I know I can't do it on my own. That's why he sent us the comforter, which is a Holy Ghost that lives in you. If you have accepted him, if you've been filled with his spirit, you got to know that the Holy Ghost lives in you. And greater is he that is in you than he that's in his world. What's in you? The Holy Ghost that lives in you. Amen. The Holy Ghost. God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same God. He don't change. He's the same God, and the same God, amen, that touched those people and acts up in the day of Pentecost and filled them with the Holy Spirit is the same God that is working today, amen, if you allow him to come into your life. He will fill you with the Holy Ghost. He will fill you with the Spirit. The Holy Ghost, a comforter. He will fill you with his presence. He will fill you with power. He will fill you with the anointing. That's in you. Amen. Because it's there. It's there for the asking. It's there saying, God, you know, I surrender all to you. If you've been baptized, if you accepted Christ, if you got the baptism, if you have come into the faith, then you are ready to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's there for you. All you got to do is ask him. Say, God, fill me with your spirit. Every day, seek for the Holy Ghost. Seek for him to fill you with the Spirit, which is the evidence of speaking in tongues. Amen. God will fill you with his Spirit. He will give you that because it's a gift. He gives you that, a gift for you. So why? So that you can go and minister to others and go boldly out into the world. Amen. And go boldly and tell somebody what Jesus has done for you. See, it's not about us. It's about the Christ that lives in us. Amen. Once we come into God and to him, it's all about him. We decrease while he increases in our life. We got to die daily of the flesh. The flesh don't want to do nothing that got nothing to do with God. The flesh don't want to line up. The flesh don't want to pray. The flesh don't want to read the word. The flesh don't want to go to church. The flesh don't, the flesh don't want to do anything. The flesh don't want to pray. The flesh don't want to do nothing. God is concerned about God. But what? The Christ in us, the Holy Spirit, amen, that God has given you can bring the flesh under subjection to override what the flesh wants to do. <coughs> Excuse me. That's why we got the Holy Ghost in us, the leader, guide us, and tall too. The Holy Ghost is the power that's in us. Amen. We got it in us. All we got to do is say, God, you know what? Mm -mm. The devil's not going to have his way here. Because Bible you said, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Then I got to believe what you said. I got to walk by your by, walk by faith. Amen? Not by my flesh, but by faith. God, I believe you when I don't see it. I believe you when I don't feel it. I believe you no matter what it looks like. I believe you no matter what my circumstances are. I believe you, God, no matter what my past was. 
I believe that you're going to work in my life, that you're going to change in my life because you said it. I believe it. Because the Bible said faith is a substance of things to hope for and the evidence of things not seen. That means I don't even see the job, but I know it's coming. Amen. I don't even see my healing. I don't feel it, but I know it's coming. My family might be squabbling and not together and they're divided and everything, but I believe God said that, that it's going to happen if he's going to put them back together and it's going to happen. He said, if I be saved, my whole household is going to be saved. I believe his word. He said, heaven and earth will pass his way away, but his word will remain the same. If God said in his word, believe it and receive it. He said it. He says he'll never leave you, nor will he forsake you. So no matter what you're going through today, there ain't nothing too hard for God. Amen? We just got to believe his word and stand upon his word. And if you don't, sometimes, amen, we can just sit there and, and say, I believe God. But we got to know what we believe in God for. How can I believe God if I don't know what I need and what I want? Sometimes we pray and we pray amiss because we don't know what we need and want in our lives. We got to know that we what we want and what we need and ask God for it. Be specific. Go to him and ask him for whatever it is you need. If you need more love, ask God for more love. If you know about peace, ask God for more peace. If you need money, finances, ask God for finances. If you need healing, ask God for healing. Whatever you need, all you got to do is ask God for it. Amen. And trust and believe that he's going to do it. Now, one thing about it, God might not come when you want him to, but God comes when, amen, always on time. That's what the song says, always on time. God knows what you need and he knows how to get it to you. He knows when to get it to you. Amen. We just got to trust God. He said he knew you before you was even in your form in your mother's womb. That's an all powerful, all knowing God. And so he knows what you need and how to get it to you. You just got to trust him. You just got to believe him. You just got to keep the faith. You just got to stand upon his word. You just got to re remind him that God, that you said, God, that if I, amen, if I believe in you, God, that you will work in me, that you will make a way out of no way for me, that if, God, that I walk by faith and not by sight, that you will make a way in my life, God. I just got to believe you. I got to believe you no matter what it looks like, God. No matter what I feel, I got to believe you, God. But the doctor said this. I got to believe you, God. The psychiatrist said this. I got to believe you, God. There's no hope. I got to believe you, God. What people saying. I got to believe you, God. What about my past? I got to believe you, God. What happened back in the years ago and, and now yesterday? I got to believe you, God. I don't feel nothing. I got to believe you, God. What your mother and father said. I got to believe you, God. I got to stand upon your word that what you said, you will bring it to pass. You know what? Because you, you're a God that don't lie and a God that will never fail. We serve an awesome God. Amen. God is not going to go against his word. If he said it, he will do it and he will bring it to pass. I just got to keep trusting him and walk by faith and not by sight. And keep saying, God, you're going to bless me with that home. God, you're going to bless me with that car. God, you're going to bless me with that husband. God, you're going to bless me with that wife. God, you're going to save my children. God, you're going to bring deliverance in my family. God, you're going to bring reunification in my family. God, you're going to bring us closer. God, you're going to heal my body. I'm going to remind you of what you said in your word. And then trust in you and wait upon you and you're going to bring it to pass. Because why? You're a God that ain't going to lie. You're a God that said it and you're a God that will bring it to pass. Amen. Listen, you have to just trust God. It's hard sometimes with all these circumstances and all these things going around, but we got to stand upon the word. 
We got to know that when God is in us, God said, if he is for us, who can be against us? If he is for us, what can come against us? Amen. Because greater mm, is a God in us than he is in this world, which is a Satan and everything else that's coming up against us. But we got a God that's in us. They got all power in heaven and all power on earth. That's a powerful God. They got that much power. Amen. What can God not do? He can do anything but fail. And we just got to believe him and trust him. But the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things will be added unto us. See, sometimes we got to know that we got to put God on a pedestal. We got to put it on the pedestal of our heart. We can't be seeking everything else and then put God on a, on a back burner and say, okay, I'm going to do this and do that and do that. And then I'll go to God. No, we got to come to him. We got to seek him. We got to love him. We got to follow him. We got to stay in our word. We got to trust him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his word. Stay in his word. Amen. Stay in the word of God. If you don't pick up the word and read the word, how are you going to know what to do in the word? How are you going to know what does said the Lord if you don't even read the word? How are you going to know what he said if you don't claim the word? Every day, put the word of God on you. It's like washing your face. Wash it with the spirit. Wash it with the word of God. Wash your mind. Amen. With the word of God. The devil is a lie. I am blessed. I am the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Blessed coming in and blessed going out. The devil is a lie. By his strike, God says, I am healed. The devil is a lie. Amen. We got to know the word of God so that when the enemy comes in, amen, like a flood, God will lift up a standard for us. Like a flood, he'll lift up a standard. Amen. No weapon formed against us will prosper. It didn't say it won't hit us. It said it won't prosper. It won't go nowhere. Why? Because the word of God is going to come in and we're going to use the word of God against Satan, against everything that the enemy is coming through with our minds and tear down our imaginations and everything with the word of God. There's power in the word of God. Amen. There's love in the word of God. That's where it's at. There's peace in the word of God. There's deliverance in the word of God. We got to stay in the word of God. Because that's what a power at. When he spoke things into existence, he spoke it by his word. Amen. We got to speak the word of God against Satan and draw near to God. We got to speak the word of God. And resist him. He got to free. But we got to speak the word of God. We got to use this word. Not our own words. Not what somebody else has said. But the word of God. The Holy Bible. We got to speak that. Against the enemy. Amen. He can't stand the word of God. That's where the power is at. That's where the deliverance is at. It's not in us, but it's in the word of God that lives in us. And if God is in you, he's giving you that. You have authority to tread upon serpents. You have authority, amen, that is something, if you can drink something, it won't nothing happen to you. You have authority, amen, to put the devil under your feet. Because why? You got God in you and living within you. And every day, it's God. It's all about him. Amen. It's not about me, my four no more. It's all about Christ. He says, if he be lifted up, that he will draw all men unto him. It's about him. Once you lift him up, amen, he'll do the rest. But we got to lift him up. We got to come up and stand up against us. We got to put on that full armor of God. Amen. We got to be ready with our sword, which is the word of God. Amen. We got to be ready with the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. We got to be ready with gird with the belt of truth around us. We got to be ready with our feet shod and the preparation of the gospel and telling it about Jesus and what he has done for us and what he is and who he is. Amen. It's about that. But we got to take that sword and cut down everything that the enemy trying to come up against us with. 
cut it down with the word of God. Because that's where the life is at. That's where the deliverance is at. That's where the healing is at. In the word of God. He said he could overcome by uh, the blood and by the word of our testimony. Tell it. If God has done something for you, if God leads you to tell somebody, tell it. Just tell it all. That's what the song says. Tell it. Because you never know through your testimony, somebody else can be healed. Through your testimony, somebody else can be delivered. Through your testimony, somebody else can be set free. Through your testimony, somebody else can say, what must I do to be saved? Through your testimony, amen, somebody else that is and gave up, amen, can be free. And say, you know what? I'm not going to kill myself. I'm going to be free in Christ. And he loves me. And I love life. And God loves me. And I'm valuable. And I'm not hurting myself no more. You never know through your testimony, you can help somebody else overcome. Just by your words. Or what God has done for you in your past. Or what God is doing in your life now. Amen. Tell somebody. Tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus and what he's done for you. You know when you're in love with somebody, you talk about that person. When you're in love with somebody, you just tell everybody. Oh my God, this man. Woo wee. All this and that. You, you just tell everything about this man. Because you're so happy. And you feel good, the flesh feels good, and you talk about him all the time, you smile every time they mention his name. Oh my God. Jesus wants that too. He wants you to be in love with him. He wants you to just tell everybody about his goodness. He wants you to tell everybody how much you love him. He wants you to tell every just he loved to be praised. He loved to be uplifted. Amen. He inhabits the praises of his people. We're his children. You know, I can't help but praise him because he's been so good to me. As I look back over my life and what God has done for me, girl, I can't help. Ooh, I can't help but praise him. I just thank God for what he has done in my life, how he has brought me out. And sometimes when you are going through something, just look back. Don't be looking back like Lot's wife. Or wishing you can go back. But look back and say, look what God has done for me. He brought me out before and he'll bring me out again. Why? Because he's the same God today, yesterday, and forever. He brought you out before that situation. He delivered you before. He brought you up. Amen. He saved you before. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He wants you to just come to him. He wants you to just cast all your cares upon him. He want to be God in your life. He want to be number one in your life. Amen. He says first, you, the first commandment is to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second one is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. But the first one is to love God. God had to come first. God had to come before your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your children, your money. God has to come first. He wants to be first in your life. He's a jealous God. He said, I ain't have no other gods before me. He wants all of your love. He wants all of you. And when you put God first, amen, all, oh, it says when you lift him up, and you just start blessing him, amen. All the blessings of the Lord will start following you. It'll just start following you. We ain't got to even look for it. It'll just start coming on you. Because why? You were with your first love. Your first love is Jesus. If you're a Christian, you're a believer, your first love is him. And all he wants is your attention. He don't want your religious stuff. He wants a relationship with you. He wants you to wake up every day praising him. He wants to be the first thing on your mind in the morning and the last thing on your mind when you go to bed. Amen. Because you're in love. You're in love. And so when you're in love, you're going to talk about that person. When you're in love, you're going to share. When you're in love, you're going to smile. When you're in love, you're cheesing. When you're in love, oh my God, you just can't get enough of that person. You want to spend time with them. You want to be in fellowship with them. You want to just, oh. That's how it is with Jesus. You can't help but just 
When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you can't help but love him. You can't help it. You know, we're not perfect. But when the Holy Ghost is in you, you can't help but give him praise. You can't help but fall in love with Jesus. Because why? He's so good to you. Amen. And I just want to tell y'all today that whatever you're going through today, and there's nothing too hard for God. Just give it to him. Lay down every weight, everything that's bothering you. Lay it down at the foot of the cross. Pray without ceasing and give it to God. Believe that he's going to do it. He's going to work everything out. Amen. For your good and his glory. God is good. Amen. I just love the Lord. I just love him. I don't know what I'll do without him. I just don't know. I would be like that ship without a sail. I would have no direction. I, I, I just wouldn't even be existing without him. Amen. I'm so glad I met Jesus. And he wants you to know him as your If you don't know him as your personal Savior, please reach out today to him. He loves you. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you did in your past, no matter what you look like, no matter what people have said about you, no matter about your circumstances, no matter about your whatever is going on, Jesus loves you today. Amen? God loves you. Accept that love. Receive him in your heart today. He loves you and he wants to be Lord in your life. He wants you to, amen, to just accept him in his life. He wants you to study your word, get into your word. Read about him. Start praying to him. Start worshiping him. Find a church home where you can go and worship God at and praise him and give him glory. You can grow and glow in him and then go in him and, and reach somebody else to him and be filled with this precious gift of the Holy Ghost, which is your keeper. We're just there to help you and lead you and guide you into all truth. Amen. God loves you today. Jesus loves you, and I love you too. Please subscribe and like. Amen. If you enjoyed this this testimony, testament of the goodness of God, um, I will be doing Bible studies soon, uh, praise and worship, including some dollar store halls maybe, and we'll go out sometimes and just go out in nature and give God some praise, go to a park, go outside, just give God some praise giving you a scripture every day. Um, and if you need, have any questions, I'm doing Bible study. If I don't know it, please, I'll get someone else that might know it that can answer the question. Because we only know in part. We don't know everything. 